Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. everyone. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark. I'm with Steve. And today we're going to look at using a plugin with Final Cut Pro 10 to achieve a very specific kind of effect. Right. It's called SliceX. A lot of you Final Cut Pro users are already familiar with it. It's basically a plugin that allows you to uh, make a mask and then track that mask. The company is CoreMelt? CoreMelt. Okay. C O R E M E L T. CoreMelt. Right. Right. And look, here's the bottom line. Um, you're going to need to do traveling masks, or you want that mask to animate over time for various reasons. And okay. I'm going to tell you what my reasons are in a moment, but you just can't do that in Final Cut Pro. You can't really track something. You can do it in motion, but then you have to go to another app. And You can do it in Final Cut with this plugin. But I Perfect. really don't want to talk about the plugin as much as I want to talk about why I want to use it. All right. There you go. So okay. let's take a look. So over the holidays, uh, I directed, wrote and directed a short film called Cupcake about this, uh, this kooky little obsessed Christmas girl who likes to bake cockpits and she's kind of, well, she's tormenting this girl in this room. We don't, don't exactly know very dark know why. and it's scary. Very, yeah, very dark one. So she's entering her room here with the cupcake she's baked, and this is like the perfect cupcake. Okay, it's clearly at night. Really. Clearly at night. Uh -huh. Now, what I'd like to do is bring more focus to that cupcake because it's, it's, got, it's kind of ominous. She walks it in, she's got this cupcake she's offering her. Okay. It's a peace offering. Uh -huh. um, and... I liken it to the 1943 movie um, called Notorious by Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock. I'm a big Hitchcock fan, and, and in that movie, Cary Grant, we're not sure, but we think he wants to murder his wife. Uh -huh. And so he's bringing up a glass of milk upstairs, and uh, Hitchcock actually put a light in the glass of milk to bring oh, to make you look at it and bring your focus, your attention on it. Okay. That's right. And if you watch the movie to this day, you'll, you're not really sure if Cary Grant is the bad guy or not. And that's because the studio didn't want to give him the impression that he was a bad He's guy. He's a bad guy, okay. He wouldn't yeah. like that. That wasn't part of his contract. Right. I'm the good guy. Exactly. <laughs> so it's interesting watching uh, Notorious now with that with that in mind. Okay. So this is my, my, my homage, my homage to, homage, homage yeah. to yeah. Notorious. Great, okay. very so, cool. So here um, I have this cupcake and she's some, coming in. What I'm going to do is I want to start... Um, I want to create a mask for that cupcake starting about this frame, and I even have a marker there. And I'm going to go ahead and open the effects browser. And notice I'm using a set of effects called a Slice X. Yep. Okay? And there's a set of eight of them in here. And the one I'm interested in, the one that says Color Correct Shape Mask. And there's a bunch of them here, and perhaps we'll get to them at some time. But all you need to do is drag this out and just Drop it, it on the clip. Drop it on the Just clip. Just like any Boom. effect. Boom. Okay. And look at this. We get this custom interface. That is very cool. Yes, whole I'm already set of tools. excited. Yes, yeah. whole set of tools. I know. It gets you excited right away. <laughs> no, you haven't seen it do anything. Right. Now, the thing is, you there are different shape masks already built in. You have what's, what's the funky wavy green line going across the top? Well, here? that's <laughs> it's kind of a shape mask, but what okay. I want to show is you, you click this and you'll get different kinds of shape, uh, okay. shapes. That's all they are. Like if you want to create a polygonal kind of a, you, you have something that's more shaped like this, you can create, um, you know, different shapes okay. to track. Uh, I don't like any of these for what I'm about to do because a cupcake's kind of an odd shape. Okay. So what I'm going to do is clear it out by clicking the one I want, which is a freeform shape tool. Okay. Right? By the way, that's how you clear out a previous just shape. Just select another one. one. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place my mouse over the cupcake and I'm just going to you're just going to drag? I'm just going to just drag. Oh, wow. And I'm going to just draw. You're just kind of outlining it. I'm just going to outline that little cupcake. Boom. Just like the, the yeah. top of it, the just, white part. Just the, the white part. That's all I'm interested yeah. in. It's my, it's my glass of milk. It's my notorious glass of milk. I want to, I want to bring That's emphasis to it. That's what you want to brighten up. Okay. Right. So now I could adjust the shape using these handles, and maybe I didn't quite get it right. You can grab these little, um, these little points. You can move them around. You and I'm assuming you could zoom in on your you image can, if you yeah, want to look exactly. at this. Again, not interested in that right now. I mean, yeah. that's a whole tutorial in itself, and there's plenty, they, they produce really great tutorials on their side. Okay. I'm more interested in what this thing is doing for my shot. Okay. And, and out of the box, it works fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is I need to track this shape. She's gonna be moving toward the other character. So I'm just gonna click this little button right here. Little so forward little button. Little forward button says track forward. Okay. And it's just, you know, track, 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 track. And eventually it gets lost. And the reason it gets she, lost she's is because- disappearing behind. She, right, because that cupcake goes behind um, the character in the foreground. Oh, well, it's the character's head in the foreground that's, that's right, black. Right. Okay. Now, you know, in in technical circles, they would call that, well, we'd have to mask, that's called an occlusion, right? Because, you know, you want to keep the mask following through. Yeah, and the mask can't follow it right. anymore because the shape basically changes at that point. It changes. So, again, 
you could spend some time and use the keyframe tools and you can keyframe it. Yes. Again, not interested because I'm interested in just moving on because I got to get yeah. this thing working. <laughs> so one of the little tricks I do is I'll, I'll just, like to about here, I'll just split the clip there. I'll just hit Command B and I'll remove that, I'll remove the, uh, the track mask on this side of the clip. Oh, so I'll just okay. go over here, open it up and I'll just turn it off. Turn it off. Okay, okay. right. So really, the, the, the mask is only happening on this side of the clip. You're only interested in that part I'm of it anyway. I'm only interested in that part anyway. Okay. Exactly. So I'm going to, the clip is selected. You can see it. And mm -hmm. now I'm going to use uh, their built-in color grading, oh, so color correction some, tools. They have color correction built into the into the effect itself. That's right. Okay. So what's really nice is I want to go ahead and just boost the gamma just, just a little bit there. Just brighten it up just a little bit there. And again. Can you go too far just so you, I can really see something dramatic yeah. happen? Okay. Yeah, you can really see it. If I want, I can bring in some brightness or saturation, but again, I don't want to overdo it. In fact, I might want to add a little blue because there's a, a blue light, moonlight coming through the window. Okay. So I might just, to make the match the, the room ambience or the room light, I might just add just a touch of blue, ah. just a touch of blue to it. Okay. Okay. Again, the idea is I'm, I'm, I'm relighting the scene. I'm actually putting a spotlight on that yep. cupcake. Yep. And, and doing it digitally. In post. So in post. So all I really need to do now is render this out. I mean, you can see the red bar here and I don't have background rendering turned on. So I'm going to go up to the modify menu and I'm going to just render, just selection. render selection. And it's, if you got a fast done. done like that. Wow. So now if I play this back, watch the cupcake. Yeah. Very, very clear. Very you can really see it, but it doesn't look like it's uh you know, fake or anything. It doesn't. It just, it just it adds, really your adds a it. little bit of, of a brightness to the light, uh, to the excuse me, to the cupcake. And again, if I if I toggle on and off, you can see you have before and oh, after. Oh, definitely. And uh, yeah, I just think it's fantastic, Mark, for for, for little fixes like it's this. It's great because the built-in color corrector tool in Final Cut Pro 10, you can mask something and then you can track it by keyframing. Right. But that would take a lot of work to make that work correctly. And this to be able to really draw the shape out exactly and have it track, that's fantastic. Yeah. It's about a hundred bucks for the tool set and you know what? It, might, it depends on what your time's worth. Yeah. You know, hundred that was a hundred bucks well spent, yeah. in my humble opinion. For one shot, cool. and now you've got it for anything, because you can use it for all kind of things. All, all kinds kind of, of stuff. All, all kind of, of <laughs> stuff. All kind of stuff. And uh, perhaps we'll hit that in future MacBreak episodes. Great. So we'll take Excellent. a look. Yeah. Steve, great. Thank you. Hope that was useful for you guys. Thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.